This lecture will discuss the ECG findings in first-degree AV block. First-degree atrioventricular block is identified on the ECG by a prolonged PR interval. The term AV block, which implies failure of conduction, is actually a misnomer. The pulse is still conducted, but with an increase in the amount of delay. As the name implies, this excessive delay usually occurs at the level of the AV node. The PR interval starts at the beginning of the P wave and ends at the onset of the QRS complex. Note that the PR interval includes the P wave and the PR segment. Do not confuse the PR interval with the PR segment, which is the isoelectric line that occurs in between the P wave and the QRS complex. The ECG on the top right depicts a normal PR interval. To determine its duration, we simply count the squares from the beginning of the P wave to the start of the QRS complex. The duration of one little square is 0.04 seconds or if you prefer, 40 milliseconds. The duration of one big square is 0.2 seconds, or alternatively, 200 milliseconds. A normal PR interval is between 0.08 and 0.2 seconds. Any duration exceeding 0.2 seconds is considered prolonged, and in some cases, the PR interval may extend even beyond one full second. With such extremely long PR intervals, the P waves can become obscured or hidden by the T waves. Now let's count the number of small squares within the PR interval in the normal ECG at the top right corner of the screen. There are about four little squares. That equates to 0.16 seconds, which is well within the normal limits. Now let's look at the image below. The entire PR interval fits within one big square. So even without calculating it, we already know that it's less than 0.2 seconds and thus it's not prolonged. Now let's go back to the ECG with first degree AV block on the top left corner of the screen. We can see that approximately six and a half little squares fit within the PR interval. This equates to 0.26 seconds, which is prolonged. Now in this ECG on the bottom left, the prolongation is less clearly evident. But on close inspection, we can see that the PR interval is indeed longer than one large box. Thus, it is greater than 0.2 seconds in duration. Here's another example of first degree AV block. The PR interval is about 8.5 little squares in duration, which equates to 0.34 seconds. And in this new ECG below, the PR interval is about 7.5 little squares in duration, which equates to 0.3 seconds. Now let's briefly take a look at this entire ECG. What I would like to note here is that oftentimes there will be other coinciding findings, and the start of the P wave may be more difficult to discern. In this ECG, the P wave in the limb leads is a bit more flattened than in the precordial leads. Now it is clearly visible in V3. In addition to the PR interval prolongation, there are also features suggestive of a right bundle branch block. Note the widened QRS complex with a bunny ear pattern in V1. And there's also a left anterior hemi block. Note the left axis deviation and an initial R wave followed by a deep S wave in lead 3. I will discuss these other findings in subsequent lectures. But I'd like to briefly mention that the presence of these additional conduction abnormalities suggests that the defect resulting in PR prolongation may be located somewhere below the level of the AV node. Now there are a few more features of first degree AV block which are worth paying attention to. While the PR interval is prolonged, it does not vary from beat to beat. Lengthening of successive PR intervals followed by a drop beat would be indicative of type 1 second degree AV block. The heart rate is dependent on the underlying sinus rhythm and is not usually affected if first degree heart block is the only abnormality present. The RR intervals are consistent and the atrial ventricular rates are equal. First degree AV block does not result in drop beats. Every P wave is followed by QRS complex, that is the AV conduction ratio is 1 to 1. If there are P waves that are not followed by QRS complex, then you should consider the possibility of a higher grade block or another abnormality.